Is he guilty? I don't care if Alvin Bragg was out to get him. Because if Alvin Bragg was out to get him, and he wasn't guilty, then he wouldn't be guilty. Right? I mean, that, this is... The, <laughs> I'm sorry. This is like, you know, like, like in the social network. You know, if you had invented Facebook, then you would have invented Facebook. Yeah. If he wasn't guilty then he, he wouldn't be guilty. Hello, everyone. This is JVL here with my best friend, Sarah Longwell, publisher of The Bulwark. You and I haven't talked about this. Mm. How are you feeling about all of the things? Well, you know, it's interesting to do the show with George. George has a... So I do this stuff with George a lot, and he's always very, like, keyed up, you know? Uh, if you may recall the live show at Sixth and I, he was just downright giddy, out of, in and out of his chair, you know? But he was almost laconic, in his like demeanor, he just was very like, yeah, this is what was going to happen. And anybody who thought that this wasn't going to happen. And to be fair, he had been arguing this pretty strenuously. Like, he was right. I think, you know, the idea that it was always a fait accompli, I don't know. Um, but that was really his take was just um, actually two things that, that he thought that were interesting. One was like, this was always going to happen because the case was so strong. Um, which I think was sort of your view, too, like that the prosecution had really done its job and there wasn't much on the defense side. Yeah. I, to be fair, I, I did not think it was a slam dunk. Yeah. But I thought the pro I mean, I thought it could have been a hung jury. I thought an acquittal was basically impossible. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because the prosecution had made its case. The other thing that George said that I thought was surprising is he thinks that Trump is going to go to jail. Yeah. For a period of time. Which yeah, I clocked that. Most... I wouldn't say that that is not the consensus. That is the opposite of the consensus. But, um, you know, I, I don't discount his expertise. I don't have an expertise. Here's, here's what I felt. I got off a plane. I had flown back from San Francisco. And so I had landed at Reagan and I was um, waiting for my Uber and somebody walked by and was like, there's going to be a verdict. Like they said it to somebody else. And I was like, oh, my gosh. And picked up my phone and then started refreshing. And when it started coming in, guilty, 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 guilty. Uh, and all 34 counts, that is something. That is something. And so, you know, I, I, uh, I felt very, you know, there, George, George was sort of, when he was talking about how, you know, oh, this was, obviously this is how it was going to go. I was like, look, man. We have been, for the last seven years, we've watched a special counsel investigation. We've watched impeachments. We've watched, I mean, this guy's gotten away with the, up until the, the civil trial with Eugene Carroll um, and then yeah. the Trump org, like only in the last two months have like any, anybody laid a glove on the guy um, for all of the things he's done. And so uh, I feel great about the fact that, uh, you know, there's some accountability here. That being said, um, I, 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 main, I maintain my, my wish that it was the other cases. Um, and I'm glad that this case is, is over. Glad we can start looking forward because I do think we got to start prosecuting a case against Trump that is forward looking about what kind of president he would be as a second in the second term. Um, but I, I, uh, I, I've been it's been something to watch the Republicans uh, folks on the right act like this is like this grave miscarriage of justice. That is the line. It's uh, it's wild. I mean, they are. This is this is the ultimate end point of what their flirtations with Trumpism have been, which is the destruction of the rule of law, like in the actual attack on the legal system, right? Yeah, like it's like they're like not that into the law and order, not no. that into law and order happening. No. They are into putting black people in jail. Hmm. They they like to do that, um, but uh, it's I don't know. I mean, the, the 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 histrionics, the rending of garments from the right is is really around like the world will never be the same. We now prosecute our political enemies. I don't know if you saw this. I know I know you and uh, Catherine, uh, Mary Catherine Hammer are, are friends, but uh, are friendly. So I'll, I'll 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 do the pouncing on this one, but like. Is she got community noted because she did one of these like, I don't think it's right to prosecute your political enemies. Mm. Uh, and it was took two seconds for somebody to find her having been perfectly happy for Hillary Clinton to get prosecuted. Uh, and, you know, I, I just 
This, Joe Biden didn't didn't do this prosecution, did he? Joe Biden didn't, although that's what Trump is trying to say. Right. I mean, so and and also I, I just want to be very clear. If Joe Biden had gone to Alvin Bragg and said, you dropped this case, that would have been wildly improper. Yeah. I don't I think know if that's like what- an impeachable offense, but it, I mean, we do not want the president of the United States going around to state and local prosecutors and trying to bully them into making decisions which are convenient for him politically. That's like the opposite of what we want the president to do. Yeah. Right. I mean, if you want to say Alvin Bragg shouldn't have done this, uh, that that's fine. Right. But but to try to hang this stuff on Biden, try to make it about our political enemies. This isn't this isn't anybody's political. enemy. There's one person to blame for all this. And this is the, my one response. And I would, I would say this to Mary Catherine and anybody else who tries to like, well, but it's a sad day or what else? I mean, you know, Steve Hayes did this, too, last night, I think. Yeah, he um, was with with Sarah Isger. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that guy. Um my my question is: Is he guilty? Yeah, that's it. Don't don't tell me about everything else. Don't tell me about well, normally wouldn't have been prosecuted. What is he guilty? Because if he's guilty, then none of the rest of that matters. And the only person to blame for putting us in this position, and believe me, I agree, it is not ideal to have a former president and current current uh, uh, guy uh, who is running for president being convicted of a felony. That is bad. It is not the fault of the legal system, though. It is the fault of the guy who committed crimes. Yes. That's the problem. And when you have somebody, when you elect a criminal, it puts the rest of the institutions and systems in this impossible position where they either have to look the other way and not hold them accountable or try to hold them accountable with all the, the problems that entails. And we have tried not holding him accountable for seven years. That hasn't worked great. Yeah. Hasn't worked great. Sorry, I, uh, I don't mean to be hot. I'm not like yelling. I'm not yelling at you. I know. But, th- but that's my only, my only response is, is he guilty? Right? And if your answer is no, then you're saying that the legal process we have is invalid because a jury of his peers in a, a case which, again, we can just make normative judgments about the case, right? We could say the, the facts of the case are clear, right? The facts were not actually in dispute. Did he have an adequate defense? Yes, he had an adequate defense. Was the jury selection process uh, proper? Yes, jury selection process was proper, right? I mean, it isn't the case that all all jury verdicts are immediately legitimate because there are cases in which, like, a judge acts wildly improperly or prosecution withhold evidence, right? Or there are cases where the facts are in dispute, you know, and one person says, I saw him hold the gun, and the other witness says, no, he didn't have a gun, right? It isn't the, but, but in this case, we can make all of these normative judgments that the process was followed assiduously. And so the only question then is, is he guilty or not? And if you say no, then you're saying, I don't believe in the rule of law. And if you say yes, then nothing else matters. Sorry. That's good. Very hot over this. I agree. I, I, what do you make of the sort of Susan Collins, this like Alvin <sighs> Bragg was out to get Trump. He made a promise he was going to get Trump, which I don't know is exactly true. Um, but Senator uh, Collins, it, Senator Collins, Senator, Col- Excuse me, is this on? Senator, Senator McConnell, Collins? yes, but you go ahead. Is he guilty? I don't care if Alvin Bragg was out to get him because if Alvin Bragg was out to get him and he wasn't guilty, then he wouldn't be guilty. <laughs> right. I mean, that, this is the, <laughs> I'm sorry. This is like, you know, like like in the social network, you know, if you had invented Facebook, then you would have invented Facebook. Yeah. If he wasn't guilty, then he he wouldn't be guilty. And it doesn't matter if the uh, the, the prosecutor is a a bad person who hates dogs and kicks unicorns and was out to get him because that didn't make the crimes happen. Right. That didn't create the evidence that didn't violate the law as written. That didn't uh, you know, his motivations didn't impact what the jury was deliberating. It's fucking Susan Collins. You know, I I don't I said this on the show last night. I can see a a not the JVL response, right? Not one that I would like, but one I could accept from Republicans would be uh the jury has spoken. I respect the jury and their verdict. 
I think it's possible this will be overturned on a, on appeal uh, because there are some technical questions about the application of the law vis-a-vis -vis whether it's a misdemeanor or a felony of the the underlying law. Right? That that is not the JVL position, but that would be a responsible thing to say. And instead, the closest we've gotten is Mitch McConnell, who just says, uh, "I'm not quoting this exactly, but he's like, this will be overturned on appeal." Yeah. Right, and he leaves out the part where you know, like, "Hey, we respect the jury verdict." Sure, <laughs> you know? and and that Mitch is the most nice has of been Mitch the to most come reasonable to Trump's defense on people. this. Yeah, uh, and so Susan Collins in her, you know, like at least she didn't say he's learned his lesson this time. It's true. Did you see that they crashed when when Red crashed because there were so many donations coming into Trump in solidarity? Thirty four million dollars he raised. Yesterday, I think we we just saw this in Slack. Um, just saw it. Yeah, uh, I believe it's thirty four million. It is hard for me to see that, and then believe that Republican voters don't want the strongman stuff. Right? It's it's hard for me to see like, oh, he was convicted of a felony, and that's when they really decided to open their pocketbooks and small dollar donations. That suggests to me that, you know, one of the things I've been saying a lot, you know, say there is a what percentage, if we're going to draw the, the pie chart of the Republican voters, what percent are just like, I always vote Republican, what percent are like, I really want small government and lower taxes, and what percent are, I want a strong man. Yeah. I think the I want a strong man piece of the pie is bigger than we would like to admit. And you don't know, there's no way to know this with, you know, scientific certainty, but Seeing $34 million in small dollar donations come in the, you know, in the six hours after he was convicted of 34 felonies, I think that's a pretty fair, fair piece of signal. Yeah, but the response, the reason that he's raising so much money is a bunch of people who have decided that this is a miscarriage of justice. And, and I guess the part that I find surprising is that people who are not as far from us as many others, right, there's a bunch of people who are like, this is a miscarriage of justice and there's the other people who are just like yeah it shouldn't have been brought you know it's like the steve hayes and sarah isger and um you know it's kind of this like you shouldn't it's it, it, the framing of prosecuting your political enemies which is of course not what happened no. what happened is is that donald trump like the da brought charges when donald trump was no longer president and he got convicted in the trial. Hey, Sarah, there's there's more show. Oh, there is. Yeah. Are we still talking? We have more. Yeah, talking? we're still we're still talking. The, the talking goes on, but that's only for the you know the, the people who are inside the velvet rope, the the Bulwark Plus members. Oh, they got to subscribe. Yeah, tell them to subscribe. Tell you the people. You should subscribe, Sarah. guys. Why wouldn't you subscribe? You get all kinds of things. You get some some extra uh, me and JVL. You get some extra me and George Conway. Do you get? Oh, you get JVL's triad. This is one of the best things the Bulwark offers. I read it at least once or twice a week. <laughs> yes, go and subscribe. We'd love to have you.